So I'm going to go out now and put some air pressure to this. This is open. You can see here, because there was a little air pressure on it, I'm getting a little bit of water. I'm going to go add more air to it, and that should flush out quite a bit of the water. Hey guys, welcome back to Zephyr's Travels. In this week's video, we're going to walk you through the steps to winterize your trailer. As you can tell, the air is getting cooler, the leaves are changing, and for a lot of us, this signals the end of our RV uh, travels for the year. For us here at Zephyr's Travels, we typically travel during the fall and winter, and so we haven't actually had to winterize our trailer for the past couple of years. But this year we're going to leave later in the year, and because of that, I want to make sure that we are winterized while we're waiting to go, so that if we do get a cold snap or you know some freezing weather, I'm not going to have an issue and worry about tanks or lines freezing. So the goal in this video is to show you how to winterize your trailer, or RV of any type really, and to give you this, the basics of what tools are needed, what steps are taken to do that, so that you can either do it yourself or be more informed when you go to an RV dealer to have this done. So we're going to step over to the table over here and I'll show you some of the tools and equipment you're going to need. Okay, on this table I've really got the basic tools you're going to need to winterize your RV. Now winterization primarily focuses on the wet systems of your trailer, but we're going to talk about the electrical systems and some conditioning that you probably want to do before you put your trailer away. The first thing you're going to need is an air source. So I've got this larger compressor here that's got a small tank on it, and that works really well for blowing out the lines. But not everybody has one of these. If you have one of these Vi-Air compressors, which if you don't, I highly recommend you get one. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them through our friends over at Techno RV, where I got this one. Because th this will work too to blow out your lines, though I would be hesitant to leave your lines um, solely on this. I would definitely make sure you add antifreeze, which is the other thing that we have here. This is RV antifreeze right there. Make sure you get the pink stuff. Don't use any other type of antifreeze because that could be poisonous and harmful to you and your pets. You're going to need one of these little adapters. This screws in to your city water connection and allows you to put your air compressor on that using like a tire inflator. You're going to need to drain your hot water tank. These tools are going to come in handy. This Our hot water tank has a 15 16 plug on it. So I've got a 15 16 socket here that I can pull that plug out with. If you don't have that, you could use a crescent wrench. The space in there is pretty tight, so you need to be careful, but this will work. And lastly, you're gonna need a bucket. And don't get a nice new bucket that you're gonna use for everything. If you got an old beat up bucket around, because this is gonna catch your gray water and your black water tanks, because as you flush out the system, you're going to be putting water into those tanks and you want to make sure that you capture any of that. And of course it goes without saying that before you even start this, make sure that you've dumped both your gray and black water tanks. It's not my recommendation, but this would work. And lastly, you're going to need a bucket. And don't get a nice new bucket that you're going to use for everything. If you got an old beat up bucket around, because this is going to catch your gray water and your black water tanks, because as you flush out the system, you're going to be putting water into those tanks and you want to make sure that you capture any of that. And of course it goes without saying that before you even start this, make sure that you've dumped both your gray and black water tanks or at the last campground you've been, make sure that that's done, the tanks are all flushed out and ready to go. That way you're only going to be capturing a small amount of water um, and it won't be that bad and you can just deposit this into your home uh, 
toilet. So this is basically all you're going to need to do the wet systems in your RV. I did mention we're going to talk about the, the electrical system a little bit and we'll get to that later. One of the first steps we're going to do is we're going to drain all the existing water out of the tanks. And the first tank I'm going to is the hot water heater. Now there is a plug on the outside of the hot water heater that you would want to remove and drain the water out with. I'll move the camera down a little bit closer when we start to do that. The hot water heater typically holds about six to ten gallons of water. Obviously you can just let that drain onto the ground because it is fresh water. Okay I'm here at our hot water heater. I've brought down the door to the heater and right here is the water uh, drain. This is just, and ours is just a plastic um, drain plug. So you want to be careful when you remove it. You don't need a lot of power, not a torque to open it up. It should come off fairly easy. Once I've got it loosened up, because of the clearance with this gas line, I'm just going to take my socket off and pull it out by hand. So we're just going to let that drain out here. I am noticing there's a little bit of sediment in the bottom of our tank. So we may want to take like a um, piece of wire or something to poke in there just to get that to move out. So this would be a good time to inspect your drain plug if you have any issues with leaking or anything like that. Go to your RV dealer and pick up a new one or get order one on Amazon. These are pretty cheap and you know a good insurance just to replace it and make sure you're set and you don't have any issues going on. I did notice that ours has been leaking um, when we hook up to a city water source and the system's under pressure. There's a small drip coming out of this plug. So I'm going to replace ours and get a new one. The next spot to uh, drain is the main water tank. And you can see in our Airstream it's right here between the two wheels. You need to find the location of where that is on your trailer or RV, but it should be fairly easy to find. If you know where your water tank, this happens to be just above it, you know, if our water tank fill lines are right here. And so the drain valve is right there. Just give the valve a turn and allow it to drain. So the next steps is basically just wait this out. It's going to take a little while for all that to drain out. And the same thing with the hot water. Most of that's just about done, but give it time to drain everything out while you're waiting. You can see we got 13% of our fresh water tank, so we've got a little bit to drain. Our gray has 6%, that's probably just water, and 0% on our black. So we will drain the, the gray out and into that bucket and properly dispose of it. I've got my bucket here. I'm going to capture that into this bucket and to put, dispose of it in the, uh, our home sewer system. All right, our tanks are all empty. And so our next step will be to switch the hot water bypass. And we'll show you how to do that. So this is your hot water tank. This is your cold water coming in, which would be a blue PEX line. This is your hot water going out, which would be a red PEX line. In between, you have a bypass valve. Now you typically will have one or two valves on these lines coming in and out of your hot water and then a bypass uh, line. A lot of times the valves are right here at the bypass where it tees off and there'll be a valve right there. What you want to do, if you have one valve, it's always going to be on the cold line and you want to turn that 90 degrees so it stops the flow of water going into the tank. Now hot water tanks that have a cold only a one valve on the cold line typically have a mixing valve up here that mixes the cold water and the hot water together to get the right temperature. That's what we have on our Airstream. 
but other air uh, RVs may have two valves. And if that's the case, you're gonna have a second valve at this T and you wanna turn that one off. And what you wanna do is you wanna flow all the water around the, by the hot water tank so nothing goes into the hot water tank and that prevents the hot water tank from filling up with antifreeze or any liquids while you are putting this into you know winterization. This is the inside access to our hot water heater. And so if you look down there, you're going to see a yellow valve. And you want to turn that valve 90 degrees so that the water flow to the uh, hot water heater is bypassed and the water then flows directly past the hot water heater and out to all the faucets. What you want to do is when you blow out the system or add antifreeze, you don't want to have to fill that hot water heater full of antifreeze. The, the best thing is just, just to keep it empty. Now that we've drained our tanks, we have our hot water heater drained and bypassed, we're ready to add air pressure and blow out the lines. One thing that you need to make sure is that you have a regulator on your compressor or you have a small enough compressor like that Vi-Air that you're not going to exceed 60 pounds pressure at any particular point. Because this has a large tank on it, this compressor could put more pressure on the system than 60 pounds. But we want to make sure that we keep our air pressure lower than that, or about 60 pounds. So I'm going to adjust the regulator to about 60 pounds. This is the recommended air pressure that most RV manufacturers suggest for your uh, RV for winterization. And so the next step will be to use our little adapter, our airline, and see we've just got a regular um, like tire pressure, tire filling chuck here. And we're gonna put that on the city water inline on the trailer and pressurize the system and then I can go inside open up the valves of all the faucets, the toilet and everything, and let the water flush out. All right, so this is our little airline adapter. I'm gonna just screw it right in here on the city water intake. Right there. And I'm gonna apply air pressure. And now I've pressurized our system. Unfortunately, this is where you may need an extra set of hands. But what we're going to do is we're going to go inside and to open up a valve and then pressurize it and watch it and then let it flow through. When flushing out the faucets, my recommendation would just start with the faucets as closest to the water tank and the water pump and then work your way farther and farther away. That way you've blown out all the water in the lines to that point and then as you move on to the next one you're blowing out just the water between those two points. So we're going to start here in the kitchen. And this is the kitchen water faucet. And one of the things that I will recommend is if you can, the aerators on these faucets, remove them. That will prevent anything from inside those lines from coming out and plugging this aerator. In, this, in our case, I'm just going to remove this whole uh, nozzle right here. And I'm going to let the line just drain. So I'm going to go out now and put some air pressure to this. This is open. You can see here, because there was a little air pressure on it, I'm getting a little bit of water. I'm going to go add more air to it, and that should flush out quite a bit of the water. You're going to do this for both the cold and the hot um, valves. Also make sure your, your drain is unplugged. That didn't exactly go as I planned um, with this blowing out all over the countertop, but you get the idea. I'm trying to get the water out of here, and unfortunately it looks like I got it all over everywhere. Oh well, these things happen. Um, I'm going to put a little more air pressure on this just to make sure everything's coming out.
looks like I've gotten all the water out of the cold lines. At this point, I'm going to switch it over to hot and flush out any water on that. Okay, so the water is all flushed out of the cold and hot on the kitchen faucet. I'm going to put this back together before I forget. Turn the valve to the off position. And now we'll move on to a different faucet. All right, so we're now in the bathroom. I'm going to open up the valve on this faucet and do the same thing. All right, looks like we got quite a bit of water out of, out of there. Switch it to hot and then repeat. Looks like our hot water, there you are. <laughs> Looks like our hot water is uh, flushed out. Now we're gonna do the toilet. Flushing a toilet is where you definitely wanna have an extra person, one to kind of hold the valve open while you're pressurizing it. the system and then, you know, they can tell you when all the water's done. I'm doing this by myself, so I'm just basically gonna pressurize the system, pump the valve a few times, and just let the water go through that way. You can see that we're just getting air at this point. The water's out, so we're good to go. Now, for us, the last faucet inside the trailer to be flushed out would be the shower. All manufacturers add a low, low point drain to their rigs. On the Airstream, it is underneath. I'm going to zoom in on it. I don't know if you can see, there's two valves right there. And that is our low point drains. One's for hot and one's for cold. We're going to open both of those valves up and we're going to pressurize the system one more, one last time. All right, we're all done using this valve here on our city water. Close that up, but there's one more place that I can use this that I need to flush out. Just to make sure there's no water standing in, the, in those lines. And that's over here on our black tank flush. Not every RV will have a black tank flush like this, but if you do, you don't want to forget this. So put your fitting on here. and pressurize this line. It should have gotten all the water out of that line going into the black tank. Okay, so at this point we've completed flushing out all our water lines with air, and the next step would be to add antifreeze. Now the RV antifreeze step is optional. You don't have to do this. If you feel you've flushed out your lines well enough with air, you can leave them dry. But I do have a couple uh, caveats to that. If you used a lower uh, volume compressor like the Vi Air, you may not have gotten all the water out of the system, so you wanna make sure that you flush some antifreeze through the lines so that it doesn't freeze. The other caveat I would have is if you're storing it for a longer period of time, let's say four to six months over the winter, this RV antifreeze will make sure that your hot water regulator valve does not freeze up. We've had that happen when we've just flushed this system out with air, let it set for only a couple of months, and when we went to dewinterize and use our shower, we just had cold showers and we had to get a new valve. So that would be one thing that I would be concerned about, and so if, if you are going to leave it for any length of period of time, definitely consider going with the RV antifreeze. I'm going to show you how to do this but we're only going to be winterizing for about a month or so. And in that case, we'll be putting water back into it. And I'm not going to do all the faucets, but I will show you how this works by doing the cold water line to the kitchen faucet. Okay, in this diagram, I'm going to show you how to use your water pump and a bypass valve to siphon antifreeze out of a jug directly into your plumbing system and out to your faucets. So this is your water pump. Your inline is here, your outline here. This goes to your faucets. We'll make a little faucet like this. Water coming out of it. So your water tank, you have a line coming in. You're gonna place this valve right here on this water line between the water pump and the water tank. Uh, mind, I just connected the line right here on the water tank and applied the valve right there, but I'm gonna just show it right here. So it's gonna look something like this. And then there's gonna be a flexible hose 
that you can take out and put into your bottle of antifreeze. So on this valve, there's a lever that you're going to want to turn 90 degrees to the water line and that will switch it from taking the water from the tank and siphon it out of then out of the jug that you have and it allows you to pump that antifreeze directly into your system and out to your faucets. This saves you from dumping antifreeze into your freshwater tank and contaminating that tank which means you would have to be flushed out the following spring and it also reduces the amount of antifreeze that you would need to winterize your RV. You probably can do it with I'm going to say less than two gallons. You might be able to do it with a gallon. Now I will show you the valve on our Airstream but you can't see our water pump because it is buried underneath the cabinet and I actually moved this valve out into the cabinet to make it easier to winterize. Down here in this cabinet is our antifreeze bypass valve and you can see it's just a little brass valve that allows me to switch from pulling water out of the water tank and switch it to the antifreeze jug. So I'm going to remove this cap and I'm going to thread on my water line. And I want to open up my jug of antifreeze here. And insert the hose. Now I'm just with the valve in the bypass position where it's now going to pull from the antifreeze jug and not the water tank. I will turn on the water pump and it will siphon water out of here and into our kitchen faucet. Switch on the water pump. So it should start pumping antifreeze up here to this faucet. There it is. Shut it off. Shut your pump off. And you want to go around and do that for every faucet in the trailer until you get pink water both on hot and cold valves. Just like we flushed them out, you want to bring the antifreeze in the same way. So one of the last steps is to take your antifreeze and pour a little bit into the traps of all your sinks and shower. You only need to add about a cup or so, so you don't need a lot. That should do it. I'll follow that up with the shower and the sink. And I'll actually put a little bit just into the toilet around the seal so that it doesn't dry out while we're sitting. That's all you need just to keep that wet. There. That should take care of this drain. Now I'm going to come over to my drains and I'm going to pull my gray tank and let any water that we flushed out of the system into the tank drain out into my bucket. And I'm going to do the same thing on my black tank. This assures that the tanks are dry and empty and that nothing gets, gets the opportunity to freeze in there. That completes the winterization of all the water systems in your RV. Let's talk a little bit about the electrical systems in your batteries. Now if you have lead acid batteries or AGM batteries, you want to make sure that they are fully charged and then it's recommended that you remove the batteries, put them in some place where it's climate controlled, your basement of your house, your garage if it happens to be heated, so that the batteries don't freeze. Because what will happen is a battery will slowly lose its charge over the winter months and then it will get to the point where it possibly the acid in it could freeze and that destroys your battery and your, you know, your battery will be no good after that. Now you could put a trickle charger on the batteries and leave them in your RV if you wanted to do that. I've done that in the past. Lithium batteries, which is what we have on our Airstream, is a little bit different. Per Battleborn, they recommend that you charge the batteries to 80% and then shut off both charging and uh, any type of drains on the battery. 
lithium batteries are, will, are okay in cold weather, they have a battery management system that will shut themselves down and make sure that nothing happens to them. If you can, they would recommend that you take them and keep, put them in a warmer place, but they can be stored in your RV and long as there's no drain on them and there's no charge to them. Then they will stay in that 80% range with only losing about a percent or two per month of uh, charge and so you would be good to go come spring. Other recommendations for winterizing your RV, you want to make sure that you remove all food items from it so that there is nothing inside that mice can come in and nibble on. Because the last thing you want to do is have the mice moving into your RV when you've moved out for the winter. And finally, condensation. You can buy dry packs from like Walmart or different places that will absorb the condensation in the air. It is recommended that you put a couple of those someplace in your RV so that if there's any condensation as the temperatures change, that will absorb that moisture inside your RV and prevent it from doing any type of damage. Well, that's pretty much it for winterizing your RV. I hope you found this uh, video useful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. We post new videos on a weekly basis, so hit that bell for notifications so you know when we post a new video. If you've got any tips or recommendations that you do when you winterize your RV, leave them in the comments. Other people would love to see them, and I'd like to see them too. So until the next time, guys, we will see you guys down the road. Take care, everybody. Let's not waste time. Take this slow.